Good evening, my little darklings. It's the Paranormal 60 News Night, Deathbed Confession, and the Devil's Hour Edition. It is a night of education, entertainment, and enlightenment. Somewhere, probably not here though. Just stay with us because we're going to have fun anyway. The entire cast and crew is here, plus a very special guest when we return to the Paranormal 60 News. everyone and welcome. It's Wednesday night and that means it's time to examine the news. Now this is a new year. I know I've said that twice already this week on our New Year's Eve show and and then on Monday New Year's Day show and here we are on Wednesday. But you know we we made sure to thank all of the people involved on the program and Blind Dog of course. I also want to thank of course uh Dan Masnick who helped create the images for this program. And I also want to thank, uh, you know, Bart, Bart L for the themes, the openings, the closings, the little video vignettes in between. He created these for us when we began the show. So thank you, Bart L. But there's another unsung set of heroes that are very integral to this program. And tonight I'm going to introduce one of those people as my first guest for the evening before I even bring on the rest of the anchors, because we're going to start showcasing and show lighting some of the other people behind the scenes on this program and giving them a, a, a chance to shine as well. So please help us. If you are watching live right now or watch live any night and you're in the chat room, you know there's always one guy there that we trust to police things and keep things under control. We've got other helpers. We'll be bringing them on again in the future here. But ladies and gentlemen, help us welcome Mark G. Good evening, Mark. Good evening, Dave. How are you, Thank my friend? I'm doing well. Thanks for being here this evening. We're going to bring you Thank in you. right away. I want to make sure we get a chance to hear your story, but I wanted you to get the first introduction and I Thank you for all the work you do on the live chats, my friend, and making sure that you keep people kind of on task and, and uh, people that jump in and start spamming or being offensive. You take care of them very politely and uh, just jettison them. So we appreciate that as well. Absolutely. It's an honor and a privilege. Well, let's bring him in now, ladies and gentlemen, my right-hand man with the plan. It is Chachi and his blinking drinking. This is getting crazy and out of hand. Your microphone works better when it's on, Chachi. Let's just Hey, and happy new year to you, sir. Again? Mark. Wow. Happy new year. You've got that storm raging through there, don't you? I, I have not stopped drinking since the new year, Dave, and uh, this glass just continues to, to light up my life. Oh, that's beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, the man with the Greg Nickel problem plan. Greg is here as well. Hey, Greg, welcome to the show. Hey, old buddy. How you doing? Yeah, good. Good to have you here. Thank you for being with us. And, uh, you know, once we open the door again, like a cat in the neighborhood that just keeps coming back for more treats and a bowl of milk, the colonel's back in the fold. I can't what? leave. I can't leave you, Dave. I can't leave you. We, <laughs> Thank we you for having me on. Yeah. Open it back. Table Pickles is the shirt of the night, I see. We're going back into some favorites from 2023. Yeah, you know, when we had the New Year's Eve show and people were talking about the different hashtags for the year, I thought I would start off this year with revisiting some of my favorite shirts. So for the next couple of shows, I'll have some of my favorites. Then we'll get back to uh, some new ones. Sounds like a lazy, lazy way out, but whatever. Lazy exactly. Out. It's New Year, and I've already broken wow. my, uh, my resolution. Wow. So. so I'm going to be late. As we all have. Yeah, Sweet Tea is here and in the house with us as well. Hello, Sweet Tea. Hello, gentlemen. How are you tonight? Out sorry, who are you speaking to? Yeah. The guys off camera. Yeah. yeah. The gentleman of the show. Well, let's, <laughs> uh, you know, we usually like to uh, read the news, talk about the news, read some emails. Well, 
most of us like the emails. There's one or two people that don't. And uh, we decided we would take that email segment and make it bigger, make it better. And we would bring somebody in who was willing to share a story with us this evening. And Mark G is that special someone. We're going to turn over and highlight oh, wait, you tonight. Me? Yeah, you. You're the special guest. Oh. Welcome. And oh, I know crap. the other night during the New Year's Eve show, we were chatting. Uh, and you were in there and talking about some of the paranormal experiences you've had and said you'd be happy to share them with us one night on the show. So I decided to put you in the spotlight tonight. Give us a little bit of your background <coughs> and where we're going to go for this story. Well, first off, just a little bit about my background. Uh, I am a medically retired deputy sheriff from the state of Texas. I served six years working in the Fugitive Warrants Division total of 11 years of service uh, doing that before my back said, nope, you can't go kicking doors anymore. So I had to medically retire. Um, went on to private field, did private security, private investigations. And that is what I uh, currently went into as, uh, as of now. Uh, so that's just a little bit about my background um, as far as, you know, just to help with a little bit of the credibility because this story is one of those where you're either going to believe it Oh, you're not. And I mean, I'm one of those people. I, I don't care. I, I'd love for you to believe it. It's true. It happened. But I totally understand if you don't, because it, it's a pretty wild one. All right. Well, give it to us. We're all waiting. I'm going to mute everybody so that all we get is you, you and you alone, Mark G. So no pressure. Now officially no pressure. It's all up to you. Oh, God. All right. No pressure. Okay. Um, as far as the paranormal background, my experiences started, um, we call it the, the G and Mark G stands for Garrison. We call it the Garrison, uh, compound, which is a, uh, about an acre's worth of land in the Texas, uh, Bear County, Texas area where my, uh, family has lived for, oh, 50 to hundred years, uh, had the land. Um, there's multiple houses on the property, different family members have lived here, off and on over the years. Um, but there's one house in particular, the main house, my parents' main house, where myself, my mom, my dad, my two sisters grew up in. And um, when we were growing up, we never discussed anything strange that happened. We didn't talk about anything. Uh, but later on, when we got older, we would start bringing up like, hey, did you have anything weird happen when you were in that particular room or this particular room? And like, um, for example, I'd say, did you ever see a shadow figure above your bed when you're trying to sleep? It's like, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My, both my sisters. Yeah. Both my sisters saw that. Um, there is um, the one particular experience. Well, it, so there's kind of a twofer. I'll, I'll, get this, I'll go real quick on the first one that uh, was a really oh moment for for me. After my father's death, uh, we were sitting at the kitchen table discussing all the finals, uh, finalizations for the planning of the funeral and everything. Uh, me and my mom and my two sisters were there. And my sister started talking about the strange things that would happen in the house. And my sister was estranged from me for a long time. We were estranged. She left when I was about 10 years old and we just never knew each other. She, um, I won't get into why she left. Uh, there was other reasons uh, uh, that were not paranormal that made the house uncomfortable, but we'll leave it at that. But she chose to leave uh, when I was about 10 years old. She was about 18, she left and we never really communicated honestly until that day at that table and what she said just made my jaw drop she said that several nights when she would be trying to sleep she would feel that she would levitate off the bed several feet and spin horizontally in a circle and everybody kind of looked at her like she had eight legs i on the other hand just was like you're you're joking right She's like, no, I serious. It happened. And I said, no, 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 it happened to me too. Uh, because that same exact experience happened to me when I was about eight to 10 years old, I would be going to sleep. I would feel myself levitate. I was not asleep. I would feel myself levitate several feet off the bed and spin. We never talked about this 
this story is a corroborating story that two of us never talked about before. And there's no way, you know, I never told anybody that. She never told anybody that. There's no way either of us could have known that. So that's two people having the same exact experience in that same room in that same house. Mark, I give you just a quick example. Well, hold on. I, I have to ask. You were eight to 10 years old when that happened to you? Yes. My kids can't come in with a shoelace wet without needing to tell everybody about it. Or, you know, they have any kind of slight experience and we all need to know every detail about it. How do you lift above your bed, begin to spin in a circle and place back on your bed and just decide, huh, it's better I just keep that to me. Well, that was that goes back to part of the what I kind of mentioned earlier about the why my sister left. Um, it was kind of a very abusive household, both physically and mentally. And I knew for a fact if I told my mom or dad, they would have just laughed it off. My dad probably would have just, uh, you know, who knows what. But also the type of religion that they were involved in at the time. Uh, they believed that anything at all that was paranormal was demonic. It didn't matter what it was from a knock on the wall to something looking like an angel. It was a demon. That was, I won't mention the particular religion, but it, it starts with a J and ends with a W. And they believe that every single thing that happens that can't be explained is from Satan. So I knew that. And so I didn't want them thinking that I was involved in something satanic. You know, I had enough knowledge at that, you know, even at eight to 10, I was like, no, nope, I don't want them thinking I'm like worshiping the devil in my room or something. So I'm not dare going to say anything about this, All but, right. uh, but yes, that's why. Well, you can understand my question on that. Cause Absolutely. most kids, my, my kids start levitating and spinning around the room. They wouldn't have had to leave the room to tell me I would have heard the screaming from their room and begging right. for me to uh, come save them. I, I mean, I wouldn't have, cause that's creepy yeah. and they just have to figure out their own way. But uh, yeah. All right. So, so you sit down as an well, adult, basically, you have this conversation, you, you share now, both you and your sister have come forward with the fact you had the same experiences. What is that? Same. like? It was absolutely jaw dropping and coming from a law enforcement investigator background. That's something that, you know, I call corroborating evidence. I mean, that's something that when you have two witnesses that didn't talk to each other beforehand, and they come forward with the same exact information. We're talking stuff that you could present to a jury. I mean, this is this is serious. Like uh, it, this is more than just hearsay. This is to this is like witness testimony that's corroborated with absolutely no communication beforehand. It's like gotcha. for re- the reason that like, they teach us to separate witnesses so they don't start you know connecting their stories together and things like that. Right. That, that, that's kind of my mindset on it which is why i keep these idiots separated so they never have a chance to coalesce and make <laughs> a story that will stick in any court of law good idea yeah <laughs> all right so now once you've talked about that you you and your sister have come forward do you tell your family members other family and what was their take on it after yes later in life and uh, like i said after the table we'll call it the, the conversation at the kitchen table um my mom she we had always asked, because, like I said, everybody else at the table looked at us like we had eight legs. You know, like they were just like, what? Whatever. But I've always thought that my mom had experiences here in the house, in, in that house that mm-hmm. she did not want to, that she just didn't want to admit to. So every, every few years, I would ask her, are you sure nothing happened? Are you sure nothing happened? And she's, no, Mark, no, nothing happened. Nothing happened. And I just couldn't believe it. But finally, finally, literally two days ago, because we uh, we're sitting at the table again, family family dinner. You sitting at the table. They came over to visit. We're talking. I said, "Mom, please, mom, please, come on. If anything happened, anything, I don't care how little it was, help me feel like I'm not crazy. Help my sister feel like she's not crazy. Did anything happen to you?" And she says. Okay, I'll confess. And we were like, oh, sh- here we go. And sure enough, she opens up about hearing voices, seeing shadows. 
she was just too scared and her religious beliefs were too strong, you know, too different for her to admit to all that. But it turns out that her as well. So now that's four people, myself, my sister, my other sister, and my mom that have all had experiences in that house. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother's experiences also corroborate with mine that we did not discuss before, which is the hearing conversations happening while we're trying to go to sleep, like chattering of people talking in the room. So that's what matches with my mom and I. So was lots of stuff going on. Was it English? Was it English? With language? mine, with mine, it was English. Definitely English. Basically, ninety nine point nine percent of the time, my mom said that it. She couldn't tell what language it was. So that's where it got into. Well, hmm, that's interesting. And so we start thinking about the background of the property, and what we know for a fact. Uh, you know, this isn't anecdotal. We've verified this through county records, state records. The creek bed, the location of where we are, is where Lipan Apache Native Americans, which was the, the tribe that was in this area, lived and had their burial sites. We have confirmed that. So that might explain, that's just a theory at this point, of course, but that might explain the voices she heard. As for me, it was English. Very weird. Did you guys ever feel threatened? I mean, obviously, as children, you feel weirded out by the fact you're levitating and spinning around, but that could also oh, be yeah. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory fun in the fart house, right? When they're <laughs> burping and belching to fly around in the sky. Uh, Honestly, at the moment, it was, I never felt threatened in the moment. That's what was weird right. about it. When I, when I would land back on the bed, I didn't feel scared. I just was like, that was awesome and went to bed. It, Did it, it feel was just, like hands, like like you were being carried at a concert or after the big football game? No, there was no feeling, no physical feeling whatsoever. It was literally just a a lifting off of the bed, our bodies just lifting off with no, but no, no physical hands. We couldn't feel anything doing the lifting, and I, and my sister corroborates this as well that it was just the act, the action of the lifting and the spinning. But nothing, it was just, just like if you were like, I, for lack of a better term, like in space or something, just there's nothing physically doing it. You know what happened, Mark? I know I, I've already figured this thing out. It's a bunch of ghost kids that were having a party and they were doing light as a feather, stiff as a board. And <laughs> you were, you were the one they were spinning and playing with. You know, hey, it could be. Um, so that's what happened. Um, <laughs> at the that house very dismissive i love it yeah uh, uh, no no it's anyway. just because i know time wise no 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 not dismissive you i get it, it and i agree that, no, that's no, a great that's theory fine. shut me down on my it's own just, that's fine no i no. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Dave. no 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 i know Mark. um no way, it's just will be uh, an opening for uh moderators in the chat going forward <laughs> i'm kidding mark we love you all right so no <laughs> see drifts out of sight you've got uh you've got this ancient burial grounds around you. Everybody's had these experiences. You guys are lifting up, feeling movement, spinning around. That's insane. And, and the yes. fact that you just kind of kept this, was that a one and done experience for you while you lived in that house? Oh no, there was many more experiences, but I will put a pin in that because I do want to get to the one that we discussed on the new year's show. In the okay. Chat. All right. So we could, uh, if, and, Obviously, it's your call, but you know I'd be more than happy to come back and tell more experiences that happened at the at the Garrison compound. But I do want to get to the New Year's chat type, yeah. uh, the thing I mentioned oh, in the chat. We'll have you back on one night. Maybe we'll get you and Lena and a couple of the other uh, moderators to come in. That all the people that have had crazy stories, and we'll we'll share uh, the the extended paranormal 60 family night of uh, I'll replace all these goofballs for a night with all of you goofballs, and we'll have a. We'll have a fun time, but please, uh, New Year's cool. Eve, you guys are in chat room. You're sharing experiences. Tell us about your experience that you shared that night. Yes. Yeah, so now we switch over to the psychic slash ESP empath type uh, experiences, because that's something also that uh, I've had a lot of experience with my entire life. Um, so my quick background on that is that my earliest experience, I was about 10 years old. Uh, and it was when my mom got the call that our grandmother was in the hospital and we needed to get there as soon as possible. 
So my I just remember my mom telling me, Mark, get ready, get ready. We gotta go, we gotta go. So I get my shirts, I get my shoes, get my get my get my get it, get dressed. I'm sitting on the chair, I'm putting my shoes on, and I, I, I can remember this like it was yesterday. I can see it just still very vividly. I'm putting my right shoe on, I'm tying my right shoelace, and I'm just frozen. Just something, it's like a I this is one of those things where you hear people say it's hard to put into words. I, I don't know how to put this into words. It was a jolt of energy, but it wasn't painful, but it was just this jolt of strong energy that froze me in place. I couldn't continue tying my shoe. And I said to myself, she's gone. I'm 10 years old, but I had the wherewithal and I knew. I said, she's dead. She hmm. just died. I look at the clock. We have a grandfather clock. I look at the clock. I know at the time we go to the hospital. It's about a 30 minute drive to the hospital. We get to the hospital. We walk into the emergency room bed where she is. Everybody's crying. She had passed. I remember hearing the conversation of them discussing. My mom was discussing what time did it happen? The time they said was within two minutes of the shoelace incident. When I was tying my shoe and I felt that jolt. It was within two minutes. I can't remember the exact time. I wish I could, but I just know that it was within one to two minutes of the time I felt that jolt and knew she had died. So she had died right then in that moment. I knew it somehow from about roughly 15 miles away, 15, 20 miles away. I just knew it. I don't know. I, it's one of those, I, I can't explain that, but that was... Right. I, I knew it. And so that was my first experience. So then fast forward to high school, I had kind of dabbled with psychic ESP stuff, kind of, you know, guessing numbers, guessing cards, things like this, you know, just kind of playing around with it. But I didn't really take it seriously because even I was very skeptical about it. So I show up to my English class. Our English teacher, same English teacher as always, was always there, never missed a day, was just rock solid English teacher. But I walk in this day and it's a substitute teacher that I had never seen before. And I knew all the subs. I knew all the subs. It was a 20 to 30 year old female that was sitting at the desk. No, I didn't know who she was. I looked around, I asked my buddies, who's that? They're like, I don't know. So we all sit down, it's a classroom of about 20 kids. She introduces herself. I can't remember her name. I wish I could. For the sake of the story, I'll call her Susan. She says, hello, Mrs. So-and-so is out sick. I'm Miss Susan. I'll be your substitute teacher. Let's keep it really simple today. Just grab your books, grab, open the chapter, chapter, whatever. Read the chapter. Make notes on the important things in the chapter. I'll be sitting here. So that's what we did. So I'm sitting there, reading the chapter, making notes. Every once in a while, I look up and I see her staring at me, staring at me very intently. I'm like, okay, uh, what am I doing? Like, there's no reason I should stand out. At this, I'm 17 years old. I don't have this beard at that age. I just, like, like, there's nothing crazy about looking at me like that I should stick out like a sore thumb, right? Like, it's yeah. just a group Thank of you. 20 Thank regular Thank you for the clarification. Kids. You weren't bald with a, a ZZ Top beard in, in high school. Correct. Right? Yeah, that Correct. helps. Or, okay. or, or some rainbow wig that would right. make me stick out like a sore thumb. You know, I'm, Not my that point there's being problem that... problem with rainbow wigs. I got you. Correct. And uh, absolutely. So, <laughs> 20 regular kids sitting in the classroom doing their work. No reason I should stick out, but she's staring at me and only me. Hmm. I go back, do some more work, look up again, same thing. This keeps happening for about 20 minutes. Finally, about the third or fourth time that I look up, she points to me, you, come here, please. I was like, oh, crap, what I do now? Because I was the class clown in that class. I was known to be the class clown, but I wasn't doing anything that day because it wasn't this, the regular teacher is the one I like messing with. I didn't care about messing with the substitute teacher. <laughs> so, so I was just doing what you told me to do that time. But so I go up. She, there's a chair next to the desk. She says, please sit down. I was like, did, did I do something wrong, ma'am? She's like, no, 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 no. She leans into me. She says, you can do things, can't you? And I knew what she meant. I just felt First it. First of all, I what kind of creepy meant. effect did you just use that when you did her voice, 
like a totally different voice just came out of you and it sounded like a 1930s radio that was weird uh, no idea yeah. dave you're, you're all of a sudden like you could do things can't you <laughs> that I, bizarre. I don't know i don't know what just happened but that, that's what yeah. she said that no, you can do things true. can't you okay so you can do things can't and, you? all right and i said yes and she says so can i put your hand out so i put my hand out she said put your palm up I put my palm up she put her hand over mine a few inches we were not touching there is no physical contact the energy i felt is completely indescribable to this day it felt like a power plant of electricity but wasn't painful a heat energy transfer was happening of some kind there was this intense energy it was like a ball of energy between our hands she said do you feel that i said yeah and i grabbed her hand and i like i was so scared like i grabbed her hand i lifted it i'm looking for like a shocker thing like i'm thinking she's pranking me there's nothing on her hand she's not even wearing a ring there's nothing she says that's our energy that's our power and i was like first off i've never seen you before in my life i'm thinking to myself i've never seen you before in my life i don't know you from eve how do you know that i have abilities how do you know that i've kept these abilities secret i why have i never seen you before why did you call me up here like this was all just it it was insane right. okay it was insane so she says show me i said show you what she says show me what you can do i said what do you mean she goes just go around go to each kid and just say something that you would have no way of knowing okay challenge accepted i go up to the first kid i said you woke up with a headache your mom had a cup of coffee she said, hey, son, you should try some caffeine that might fix your headache. You drank the coffee, your headache went away. He said, yeah. I go to the second kid, it was a female. I said, you, you, want, you woke up, you wanted to wear a blue shirt, but you wore the red shirt, but you really wish you wore the blue shirt. She's like, how the did you know that? I go to the next kid, the next kid, the next kid. I say something similar, like, you know, that I, I have no idea of knowing. To each kid. Then I get to this female, and when I looked at this one one girl in the class, I immediately saw a male, and I knew it was her deceased uncle. I can see him to this day. I can describe him to this day. I, I look at her and I say, your uncle died last week. You're still sad about it. You don't want to be here. She just starts sobbing. Yes, yes, that's right. How did you know? I don't know. I don't know. She says, can you please tell me if he's okay? And that's when I got uncomfortable because again, at this point, I'm still kind of skeptical about my own abilities. And I was right. like, I no. I said, yeah, I totally I'm, I'm not going to do that. Going through an entire classroom, telling everybody things that you shouldn't know. I could understand why you'd still be skeptical. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's, First it's of all, the human that is the aspect. weirdest version of duck, duck, goose I've ever heard in my entire life. It, but, but it's that human aspect you know we always yeah. look for this right. logical explanation and we're always exactly. doubting ourselves no matter how obvious the evidence is mm -hmm. so um but i told her i said your uncle was about five eight he had slick back hair it was very squared off he wore glasses he had a mustache and a goatee he, he always wore light colored tops with dark colored pants she said yes that's exactly right that's him to a t she said, what's his name? And that's the thing. I couldn't get his name. I couldn't get his name. I couldn't even get the letter it started with. So I failed on that, but I got what he looked like. I got that he had died a week ago. Um, so there was that. So then my, I, I look back at my teacher, the, the substitute teacher, she's just smiling and nodding her head. Like, yep, I knew it. So she goes, all right, come sit down. So I go back, sit down next to her. She goes, how was that? And I was like, weird. And she goes, why don't you do that more? And again, here I am asking myself, how does she know I don't do this more? Right. We just met. So, so I tell her, I just, I don't know. I just, it's weird. I don't know. I, I kind of feel weird when I do it, but it, it just happens. It's just something I can do. And, and she, so she says, give me your hands. She reaches out her hands. 
we, we hold hands. Again, she leans into me. She says, you would not believe the things you could do. You can do unbelievable things if you would just focus. And it hit me like a ton of bricks when she said that focus. It was like, boom, in my chest, like something like an awakening happening. And that's when I really realized like, okay, I need to take this seriously. I need to take this seriously. Now, yeah. being the dumb kid I was, I didn't take it seriously. I didn't learn to meditate. I'm yeah. 44 years old and to this day, I still have not truly learned to focus. Have I had a lot of experiences? Have I done things similarly? Do I have lots of other psychic and empath experiences to tell? Yes, but I also have severe anxiety. So my scatterbrain is always too busy and too, you know, I've tried meditation. I've tried to focus. I've tried learning right. and I always just get distracted. But yes, that happens. She, and she basically, she said, again, just learn to focus. You wouldn't believe what you could do. We parted ways. That was the, you know, class, class was up by that time. Never saw her before. Never saw her again. To this day, I wonder, was she an, a was she an angel? Was she an Sir. alien? Who? Sir. Who sir. or what was Sir, she? sir, I yes. have a question yes. or rather uh, an observation. Every time, yes, every single time you quote this woman, your mic goes weird. You sound like a completely different uh, yeah, mic. Weird. It's yeah. really it makes me uncomfortable. Yes. Yeah. I, I swear on everything. I'm not doing anything. I, I mean, y'all knew are. I could. No. Yeah, y'all saw in the in the pre-show I could barely figure out how to work exactly. anything. Exactly, that's so why <laughs> I don't think you're doing anything. I'm yeah. telling no, you, I, something is coming no. through right there every single time you quote her, and it that is, is amazing. Mm -hmm. Wow, Tressa, that's yeah. awesome. Right I, I it, to me because I mean I can hear my I mean I can't hear myself what I sound like to y'all, but I uh, wow I'll have to listen on the playback I guess. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, yeah, you need to. That's Very wild. Cool. So, but yeah, we parted ways. And uh, like I said, I just, to this day, I wish I could learn to focus more because I, I do believe she was sent there for a purpose. And um, there is those 20 witnesses in that classroom that, you know, can corroborate this as well. I'm fine. You know, I could, I could even track them down. I'm still friends with some of them. And um, we still talk about that to this day is how weird That's that right. was, but it's one of those Very things we just cool. shrug like, what can you even say about something like that? Right. Very cool, Mark. Boy, you do have some good stories. We're going to have to get you back on one night. We'll explore deeper, and especially the stuff that happened to you law enforcement-wise, right? I mean, there's some weird tales that you've got to share there. Absolutely. Perfect. Well, Mark, we wish you a very happy new year. Uh, happy is there anybody year. from the peanut gallery here that has a quick question before we part ways with Mark this evening and let him get back to uh, watching over the – the uh, chat as he's supposed to be doing mark i'll i'll, I'll reach out uh and, um later in the spring i'll be down in south uh, bear county looking at some stuff and i'll give you a holler before i get down there. awesome sounds great brother i appreciate it mark yeah. you mentioned about all these things happening in a house yet you kind of live on this this compound if you will so were there multiple yes. houses on the property at the time that these things were going on yes and, but they were only happening in one of the homes? That we know of. Uh, the other house was a guest house where relatives would come to visit. They never spoke of anything happening. However, they usually cut their visits short. So, for example, when they said they were going to come down and visit for two weeks, they'd be gone in a day or two. And they wouldn't say why. So I can't say what happened, but I find that odd. Any of those relatives still alive? Uh, unfortunately, no, that was my grandparents on my dad's side and my uncles on my dad's side as well. So no, sadly. All right. The Colonel has a question for you. Go ahead, Colonel. Yeah. So do you think that, uh, your abilities has something to do uh, with, with the, the house that you lived in, you know, the, what, what was you were experiencing as a child? That's a great question. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. I've never even thought about it like that. 
I've never even thought about it like that. And I know so that maybe that holy ground opened up these abilities in him, Colonel. Is that what you're getting at? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Huh. That's well, there is one room of the house that, <laughs> and again, it's one of those things like I'm going to say it, you can believe it or not. Um, there is one room of the house that literally has the floor cracking open with heat coming through it to the point where it could be 32 freezing outside and in that room you don't need to run the heater you don't ever need to run the heater that room stays like 84 degrees plus because and you can put your hand over where that crack is and there's like this heat emanating and i put emf uh meters over it and the emf readings are always higher over that cracked point of that one room so could it be some kind i, I don't know if that could be emanating some kind of force or, or portal or something could that have uh something to do with the abilities i i don't know uh but as far as as far as the psychic or esp abilities or empath abilities out of the myself and my sisters i'm the only one that that has described any of that but we have all had paranormal experiences well you if know only, i wonder if, if only we had a paranormal detective that could go out and investigate that area. Uh, yeah. uh, does anybody want to nominate Greg to go and, and stand over the portal of hell to see what's going on scientifically? Yeah. I, I don't want to make this show all about me, Dave. No, no, Greg. We're <laughs> making this show it. all yeah. about you. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay, Greg. Go ahead and accept it, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Be That'd a, be great. Be investigator. So, you know, Mark, I had one other you know, I'm wondering the fact that uh, what happened to you in the house in, in the house didn't really freak you out to the point of saying anything to your parents or anything like that. If that was you're at an age where you because Dave, don't they say children uh, uh, are able to 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 see ghosts because they don't have that blocking mechanism that we have as adults? Theoretically, so maybe, right? Yeah. So maybe what happened is that you just, when those things happen to you, you're like, okay, cool. That's what happens. You know, I'm supposed to be able to read people's minds. That's, that's kind of, that's, that's nothing weird in my house, you know? So. Cool. Yeah. Again, I think it was just the ignorance of being, you know, like 10 years old and having something like that happen. Like it's, it's almost like you don't know. I mean, what, what is there to think about that as a 10 year old child? Right. Um, it's almost like, I guess, the innocence of, of childhood. You don't know that it's, you don't necessarily know that it's different. I mean, for, for, cause there was other things where I would think maybe everybody could do that. Maybe that happens to everybody. Yeah. Um, until I started talking to other people and they're like, no, <laughs> that's not normal. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Very cool. Well, Mark G, uh, congratulations. Thank you for surviving all of that and coming on the show to share it with us. We will let you back into the chat room to police and do what you do so well for us. And we'll look forward to uh, for, uh, further conversations here on the program with you. Absolutely. I appreciate it, Dave. It's been an honor. Thank you, my friend. And thank you for awesome. all you do for the show. Good we job. appreciate that. Yeah, Mark's always in the chat room reminding people to like the show and uh, how to support the program and and everything. He's been so great to be a part of this, and uh, I'm just thankful he's been a part of this. We have to take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll get into the news. Everybody's got their stories. Nobody was drinking much during that except for old Blinky Cup himself. I could see that was the only disco move going on during that. So uh, let's take a quick break. We'll come back. We've got more right after this. In winter's grasp, a chilling tale unfolds. Wanted Magazine's issue 40, Secrets to be Told. Al Capone's ghost, in shadows it creeps. A spectral mobster, where darkness seeps. Fourteen signs of a poltergeist's might. Haunting whispers in the silent night. Pascagoula UFO. Fifty years gone by, a cosmic encounter, reaching the sky, a ghost train of Tate Bridge, echoes in the mist, a phantom journey, where souls exist. Wanted Magazine issue 40 is out now, available from selected outlets and bit.ly forward slash Haunted Magazine. 
Don't be normal, be paranormal. All right. Wow, what a great story by Mark, man. That was, that was good. A couple of just bizarre tales. And he's still so just matter of fact. You could tell he was meant to be a cop at some point in his life as an investigator. He's all about the facts. You know, when he started off uh, and he was talking about the hand thing and talking to her, I was like, this isn't Mary Kay Letourneau, is it? <laughs> I didn't why did i know it that i know when he's time. like i have trouble focusing i was <laughs> and i'm 45 i'm like don't worry every idiot on this board is only thinking about the substitute teacher asking you yeah, you so can do mean. things can't you yeah. i knew that that's where all of your brains were uh, you <laughs> do things can't you yeah dear penthouse i never <laughs> thought i'd be right <laughs> this is for real yeah all right uh sweet tea start Hi. us off let's get some news going tonight what have you got for us first story up Oh, let me tell you, there have been 130 times over the past century Bigfoot sightings reported in Colorado. No. You guys ready? Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Colorado has seen 130 Bigfoot sightings since 1926, as reported by the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, or BFRO, based in California. Matt Moneymaker, head of BFRO and researcher featured in Animal Planet's Finding Bigfoot, believes in the existence of 2,000 to 10,000 Bigfoots, suggesting they are descendants of Gigantopithecus blackie, a primate species that lived hey, in... Hey, hey. No, 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 I knew hey. you were going to say something. Hey, Look, that's what, that's, what that's what it says. Why? That's what it says. That's what it says. Oh, yeah, so if the if there were other words that it says, you would say them too. Wow. No, but that's a, a technical name. So shut up. Show of hands. How many times have we all heard the name Giganto uh, Gigantopithecus and never the word blacky afterwards? Because is... it wasn't this thing that we're talking about, dum dum. Oh yeah, oh, this is. Oh. Yeah, this is the I, thing. I, oh, I understand. If she hasn't seen that banner above our heads right there, Day Schrader. <laughs> And uh, let me help you. Paranormal Mr. Dumb Dumb to you. Dumb Dumb Schrader. Yeah, that'll be my new nickname. Dumb Dumb Chachi, new. Sweetie the Colonel, and Greg. New. A primate species that lived in Southeast Asia 300,000 uh -huh. years ago. Moneymaker mm. asserts that Bigfoot sightings are more common in mountainous areas, with elk hunters often reporting encounters due to the creature's bipedal form. Colorado ranks as the 11th state with Bigfoot sightings, with Washington, California, Florida, and Ohio leading the list. BFRO evaluates and filters reports, posting only 130 sightings on its website out of thousands received. Moneymaker plans a Bigfoot expedition in Colorado next year, aiming to provide encounters with the elusive creature for attendees. The demography of a Bigfoot believers, according to Carson Minkin of Baylor University, is predominantly white males who spend considerable time outdoors. Minkin notes that paranormal beliefs, including Bigfoot sightings, have long been a part of Western society with subcultures focusing on specific phenomena. Bigfoot's hmm. first documented appearance in Colorado was reported in 1926, and the 2000s marked a decade with over 50 sightings in the state. One notable encounter occurred in 2000 near Bakerville when hikers mistook a Bigfoot for a bear. The witness, Mike oh. French, described the creature as large, hairy, and walking on two legs. Similarly, an unnamed soldier stationed at Fort Carson reported a sighting in El Paso County in 2006, observing a six to seven tall, foot tall figure while turkey hunting with his three-year-old son. What? Bigfoot made, yeah, right? Wait a minute. Does right? he dress his son up like a turkey to go out there and flush the other ones like out? Similarly to the turkeys? Like it's weird. I don't like it at all. No. Mm. Bigfoot made its first documented appearance in July 1926 in Jackson County, according to BFRO data. The incident was reported in 2003 by an anonymous woman from Cheyenne, then 20, I'm sorry, 66 years old, who wow. heard the anecdote from her father, describing him as an avid hunter and fisherman who always kept binoculars close at hand. In 1926, near the town of Walden in northern Colorado, he watched from 
a long way off as Elk was stalked by what appeared to be two bears in an area with heavy timber. Under the late afternoon sun, he still thought they were two bears until they started walking. The daughter wrote, he said they were a brown color and quite large when they stood up. Back to you, Dave. But aren't bears quite large yeah. when they stand up? Walk on two legs. I feel I, like even taller than six to seven feet tall, but right. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a bear guy. I don't know. Nah. I know. Look at me. You think bear, but yeah, yeah. All the wrong reasons. <laughs> <Yeah. it. laughs> yeah. What's everybody drinking tonight? Chachi, what have you got for us this evening in your sparkly tumbler? Do you like that? I went yeah. clear tonight. Oh. oh. Tonic, little gin and tonic. Oh, I ah. thought you became a Scientologist. That's <laughs> the little gin and tonic. Clear. Like they it. go clear. Yeah. Uh, oh. Craig still drinking cheap beer, it looks like. Hey, that's the National Beer of Texas, my friend. <laughs> Lone yeah. Star. Things are tough at the Lawson family. You might want to send some money him a away. Drizzly, yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> Colonel. What are they? Uh, what are they giving you? Do you have a coconut drink? You better have a coconut drink. One of these, no. one of these times. No, no, actually, I'm on some. I threw my back out, so I'm on some heavy duty meds. So I'm trying to give my liver a break and mm -hmm. uh, not add any alcohol to what I've been taking. So, so can you just tell us what pills you're on? <laughs> yeah, Oxy. Oxy's <laughs> great. Darn good pills. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you know, it's it has something to do with yeah, Oxy. I don't know. I don't. It's a soap, isn't it? I thought Oxy was like a soap. Yeah, it's a cleaning yeah, agent. Acne. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, oh, clean something out. Yeah. yeah. All right, Sweet Tea. Uh, for those people that don't know, Sweet Tea uh, has done something. She goes above and beyond what the rest of us do. We just show up and, and talk about our drinks. I like to brag. Uh, I have a little mixed drink going on, a little H, a little O. I call it <gasps> Aqua Pura. Yeah, I'm not oh, drinking God. heavy tonight either, Marty. I'm with you. I threw your back out, and I'm just taking your pills while you're yeah. not paying attention. I wasn't. I was going to say that side of the story, but yeah, okay. Let me yeah. just tell you, I ever throw my back out, yeah, and I have to take some pills. That's going to be the show to watch, gentlemen. Yeah. Oh God, <laughs> because I, I will be double and by. Is that when you die? Yeah, his yeah. liver won't know oh, what's going on. Yeah. yeah, that's going to be some so, rating. Sweet Tea uh, not only brings new drinks every night, and I've forgotten to ask about it for the last two months, uh, except for a few times, but she's also making videos. So if you follow Sweet yeah. Tea, and there are links for it on today's program guide, you can follow her. You can actually see her making the drinks she's going to drink on tonight's show, and then there's the ingredients and uh, what kind of crazy concoction she's picked up. So what are we drinking tonight, Sweet Tea? It's a series. You have to watch the video. No. We well, can't. I can't wait. You're just gonna have to tell me because I didn't make oh, it. No. Yet, so oh, nice. Oh, very good. I yeah. can't wait to see the video. Gosh. Wow, I was very tired and busy. Shut up, Greg. You're on. You have a story. Oh, let's uh, let's get to it. You know, I was really surprised uh, right before the show, and you said that you sent some uh, stories around. But we had talked about this. We talked about this uh, quite a bit. Our friend <laughs> Scott Cassell, yeah, uh, had a similar incident happened to him but ufo experts now searching underwater after claims of waterborne alien craft isn't that odd mm -hmm. you know we've been talking about it for years and now all of a sudden the scientists want to get involved in it so ufo <laughs> experts are now looking into the possibility of alien craft under the seas it comes after professor bob mcguire claims to have encountered an alien craft while underwater on a submarine. The USO, which stands for Unidentified Submerged Object. See how that works? U.S. Ah, yeah. See? Was described by McGuire as traveling at 3,330 miles per hour. It would have been cooler if it would have been 3,333 miles per hour. But, Couldn't have done it. you know, they're trying to be accurate. So the professor who was taking part in classified work on board USS Hampton, described his encounter. We were underway, and all of a sudden I heard this sound, he said. It was really strange and clear, and something was whizzing by us. The submarine sonar confirmed that the craft was traveling at a speed higher than the speed of sound. What? Yeah. McGuire who works for Virginia Tech and the Institute for Defense Analysis in the U.S., said uh, he kept his experience quiet for 30 years. However, 
Now he feels comfortable retelling his encounter. It is mine to tell whoever I want, he said. Whoever he told the unidentified anomalous phenomena society. Similarly, yeah. see how I did that? A former NASA scientist there uh, says he says that there could be alien bases beneath our oceans. Kenneth Knuth, or you could say Knuth, Kenneth Knuth. You could say a lot of things. A, I guess. a respected academic who worked with NASA at the Ames Research Center between 2001 and 2005, said there's solid logic behind the theory that extraterrestrials... What's extraterrestrial, that word? Terrestrials? <laughs> yeah, maybe on the word again. Let's hear that. that. Extraterrestrials may prefer to base themselves under the sea than rather on land. If the aliens wish to remain undetected, then Nuth, Knuth, it's a K N U A. Anyway, Mr. Uh, Newt, please, you could send your hate mail right to I'm a jerk <laughs> at Watson.org. Exactly. Says that the oceans are an ideal place. 75% of the Earth's surface is water, and we have very little access to it. So, if you're going to hide out somewhere, that would be perfect. He told the Theories of Everything podcast. Theories of Everything podcast. You don't Meanwhile, need to someone else. promoting that other pro yeah, 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 you don't need to do that. that. Again, what was that podcast? No, you don't need to do it. You don't need to do that. It's yeah. fine. You don't need Meanwhile, to do that. Meanwhile, a Harvard academic said that an alien invasion on Earth is possible. However, <laughs> contrary to the narrative that extraterrestrial invasion of the planet would wipe out humanity, Dr. Avi Loeb, you know him, the, mm -hmm. the astrophysicist yeah. over there, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. said that the scenario could provide humanity with an opportunity to learn from advanced technology and more intelligent species. The aliens could be treated as gods, he predicts, and the lessons learned from the extraterrestrial species could unite humanity. Avi Loeb. You know, as I Avi listen Loeb. to Greg Reed, the first thing that comes to mind is punctuation matters. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. He speaks in run-on sentences. I yeah. have no that. I'm reading the article. There's there's periods and question yeah. marks. I don't no. think so. Doesn't so sound like it. For commas. Commas. Greg, how many books have you read? Yeah. For not You've read like six or eight books, right? Read or yeah, written? Sure. Both. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure oh. if you were to line them end to end. It's just one big sentence. Six yeah. books is just yeah. one sentence he wrote. Wow. And it's funny because those six books he's read are also the six books he's written. So <laughs> I don't know that one. Coincidence? <laughs> the one. Wh wh you which know, one? Oh, that's yeah. right. Greg Lawson is the author What's of messages from Mothman. What is this? What are we looking at? You can at? get that book with the link on today's <laughs> program guide. Oh. Yeah, I can great. hear the. You know, what, you know what, Dave? I can hear the discussion right now between Greg and his editor. No, no, no periods and no commas, please. <laughs> I want people inside my head, inside my giant purple head, feeling right. the story yeah. as it happens. That's right. Yeah, Greg, we love you. We do. No, you don't. No, you <laughs> don't even know me. I was like, she is lying right yeah. to his face. But she's sweet about it. And then he's like, so you sweet, don't even know. know me. Yeah. Greg, <laughs> don't care. They're, you, they're used to be passive aggressive. <laughs> let me passive aggressive. He's just straight over to aggressive. Yeah. Let me yeah. let me tell you, you about know. my have another substitute lone star, hippie. All right, Chachi. No. <laughs> Read a story so. for us, Chachi. Well, this is actually an exciting story as opposed yes. to the others that were read before mine. Just oh, the one. Oh, uh, no, no, just the one. Okay. So an anonymous witness of Shag Harbor, obviously mm -hmm. my favorite harbor. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Shares mm -hmm. a deathbed confession. Now, really? personally, I am a huge fan of deathbed confessions. I yeah. would like nothing more. What's this? Oh, sorry. That uh, was confessions of a mothman, I think. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. So deathbed, confession. Right. <laughs> deathbed confession. Here we go. Mm -hmm. The witness known only as, guess who, John Doe, was one of several to see a strange object over Canada more than 50 years ago. Wow. The incident, which occurred on October 4th, 1967, involved multiple witnesses who saw an unidentified object transcend, nope, 
Descend. I'll take a quick drink. Sorry about that. <laughs> we're drinking. <laughs> Thank and you. we're editing. I made a longer word out of a short word. Why the heck would you, you do that? <laughs> yeah. Good on you. Uh, we saw an unidentified object descend from the sky into the ocean. A good tie into Dave's, nope, Greg's shit story. Wow. Um, Let's have another drink. <laughs> uh, you guys shouldn't put me third. You know that rule. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, in the Shag Harbor, right? uh, uh, a small fishing village situated uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> along the Atlantic coastline of Nova Scotia. Yeah. When officers arrived at the scene, they witnessed the object, which was estimated to be around 18 meters or how many feet? I have no oh, idea. Yeah. 64 okay. in mm -hmm. diameter. That doesn't sound right. It doesn't. Nope. I don't know. Eight, no. Three times eight is 24, carry the two, 54. All right, listen, Mr. Professor, ain't nobody got time for all this math. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Better at math than reading. Uh, it remained visible for some time before disappearing beneath the waves. Despite extensive efforts by Canadian Navy divers. <laughs> <laughs> Navy divers. <laughs> when you read yeah. no, they 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 uh divers? over they hover over the water them divers. Over. Hoover, remember Hoover? That was Hoover. a shirt. We'll pull that one back. Yeah, Hoover. yeah, they Hoover over the water. Despite, expense, despite extensive efforts, are you having Canadian... a heart attack, Chachi? Why are you clutching <laughs> the left side of your chest? <laughs> 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 it's like right right under his hurt. arm and clutching your. I'm chest. coming. I'm coming. Chest hurts. <laughs> hey, Marty. I don't want yeah. to hear about your weird turn-ons. We're checking yeah. on Chachi's oh, health. <laughs> Oh, all right, please go. So on. Despite the extensive efforts, well, uh, huh? self editing himself again. Knocked himself I didn't touch the screen. I know he was gone and back. All Who's right, it? go ahead. Chachi, finish the story. <laughs> and I thought to myself when I read over this, this is the shortest story I've ever had. <laughs> it is. Was, this is it. That's the entire story. Good 42 font. I apologize. You're doing great. You're doing great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Despite uh -huh. extensive efforts by the Canadian Navy divers to locate the object on the seafloor. No trace of it was ever found, and the incident was ultimately dismissed as unexplained. Now, more than 56 years later, a witness who had observed the object at the time has described his experience as follows. This was a large, brilliantly lit rectangular Ooh, that was like I, mean, I think you threw an extra syllable. Brilliantity. <laughs> the problem is my throat's dry. Mm. That's it. That's the problem. Uh, it came out of the water and ascended into the sky and quickly disappeared. This photograph was taken roughly 30 miles away from Shag Harbor about a week after the incident started. As far as I'm aware, and to the best of my knowledge, no man-made aircraft or submarines possessing such technology. Possession, you say. I was worried about that one. Uh, <laughs> I got you. Exist. One can clearly see from the photo enlargement that you've got there, Dave, that this object has no visible means of propulsion, has no wings, no engine. Quite extraordinary and remarkable as to how this object moved and traveled around. I have carried this burden for over 50 years, and it is now time to set this free. Good for you. Yeah. How could he set it free? It has no engine, no source of proportion. Proportion. Wow, you didn't even read and you got the word wrong. <laughs> I don't have it in front of me. No sense of proportion uh, at all. 2024 is your, you know what? 2024 are you? Look, Dave is frozen. That's, yeah. you know what? Do we lose Dave again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. That true. Yeah. Look, did he, he really? He, yeah. Yeah. He's just gone. keep going. So anyway, Shag Harbor. You're saying that's your that is uh, that's a good harbor, right? Good there. harbor, right? It's so like listen. the best one from what Real I've fast. heard. Fast. Uh, I think yeah. the Colonel, you have story number four. Is that correct? No, Actually, I do. No, I, I have four. He does. Wow. Oh, I'm that's sorry. What I said sweetie. like five times, but that's I fine. have right. story. Well, the Colonel had a story yet. So. Yeah, sweet tea. It's up to you. Let's do this. Thank you, Chachi. Let me read this story about a cursed painting strikes again for a new owner. Wow. Mm. A supposedly cursed painting initially 
bought from a charity shop in Hastings, East Sussex in August 2023, has garnered attention for changing hands multiple times. Initially thought to be a regular portrait of a young girl, the painting was unexpectedly returned to the shop the next day. After being sold again, it was once more returned with the new owner reporting shadow figures in her house. Mm. Capitalizing on its perceived cursed status, the charity shop owner displayed the painting in the front window with a chilling message inviting brave buyers. She's back, sold twice and returned twice. Are you brave enough? The story went viral online, leading James... Kislingbury, managing director of the London Bridge what? Experience. What was his last name again? Uh, Kislingbury. Oh. To purchase oh. it for over $2,000. Wow. However, the curse seemingly took effect even before Kislingbury acquired the painting as his car broke down on the way to the shop. Once displayed, the cursed painting brought about a series of bizarre incidents, including camera malfunctions, flickering lights, TVs shutting off, and a reported mysterious entity in a black skirt. Kislingbury mm -hmm. also experienced personal setbacks, such as his father-in-law falling ill and a toaster exploding the no. un yep the unusual occurrences ranging from floods to technical issues have left kislingbury questioning whether there's more to the painting than meets the eye despite potential skepticism back to whoever's uh, in may what's wow. going on hey, can i ask you a question please yeah i'm a, an expert what's up is the curse <laughs> Portrait? Does it say Shag Harbor UFO? Because that's what I'm seeing. Yes, on. yes, okay. that's uh, that's a photo of the cursed uh, portrait of the little girl in the black skirt. Yes. Oh, oh, hey, oh, look at that. oh. oh. that looks. I'm strange. sorry. That's what I meant. That's. It says twenty dollars, so that can't possibly. Oh God, Dave is. Knows. There he is. Am I heard? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear yeah. you, but you're scary looking. You're a shadow I'm person. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a bit scary looking. Weird stuff. Keeps happening. Uh, yeah, so the, mm -hmm. the haunted painting, great mm -hmm. story. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's just take a minute to try to uh, get things back in gear here. We'll do this first. Innovation, creation, vitality, and joy are the pulse of mysoultopia.com. With many custom creations for the mind, body, and spirit, along with classes, intuitive sessions, coaching, MySoulTopia.com strives to bring sophistication with a twist to the metaphysical and the holistic market while raising the community's vibration and channeling the new paradigm, which means new and exciting adventures for all. MySoulTopia.com is utopia for your soul. Visit MySoulTopia.com, your one-stop shop for all your metaphysical needs. Offering hand-selected crystals and crystal jewelry, with prices to fit every budget. MySoulTopia.com offers the best selections of tarot and divination cards by top designers, expertly curated and award-winning book collections with top authors on every subject you'll need on your spiritual journey. MySoulTopia is also proud to offer the finest singing bowls and an eclectic collection of the most amazing gemstones crystals, and crystal jewelry from the top metaphysical designers in the world. MySoulTopia.com is always your one-stop shop for award-winning mixes of Florida water, sage spray, and other spiritual protection. So begin your journey with the best resource, MySoulTopia.com. That's MySoulTopia.com. Why mess with the rest when you can start with the best? MySoulTopia.com. Again, that's M-Y-S-O-U-L-T-O-P-I-A.com. Hey, look, I'm back. Hey! <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I'm not a Mac guy, and this Mac knows it, and apparently is holding oh. a grudge against me. Nah. Yeah. I got mm. nothing. 
Uh, the Colonel does not have stories tonight because I wow. he had no way to get them well, and be online simultaneously. I'm on strike, actually. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's hopped up oh, on Oxy. Got a contract? Yeah, he's, he's hopped me? up on Oxy Where's and just... Yeah. Yeah. Am I the drama? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, Chachi, you have the next story, sir. Oh, I just retired that story. Let me bring it back out of retirement. Wow. Here we go. You ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Texas Everybody. mom is terrified. As a haunted doll returns to the house, yeah, threw it away, not once, but twice. Ooh. Let's be honest. Dolls get a bad rap in horror films. They're mm -hmm. often pretty creepy, as Mr. Schrader has shared with us a number of times. Uh -huh. You may never look at your childhood toys the same, though, after watching a chilling thriller or two. But one thing we didn't think would prove quite so scary is a Disney toy. But one woman has been left terrified after a piece of frozen merchandise her young child was given for Christmas. A mom in Houston has taken to social media to reveal why she believes her daughter now I, I just gotta say here I don't want to mess her daughter's name up mm -hmm. You're gonna be go. easily confused with something else Dave I'm getting mm. ready Say it slow. How would you pronounce her daughter's name? <laughs> it's not my story Oh come on Can I oh, phone a friend? I'm going to say, oh, okay. that's nice. That's a nice name. What it's is a it? beautiful name. So I didn't want to screw it up. And nope. it could be something. Let's say else. It's correct because it sounds good. And oh, they're what? in Texas. Oh, so they're real up. close to you. Yeah. Screw it up. She has a haunted, which, which, which doll do you think is the problem? Anna or Elsa? I don't know. I'm going to say, let it Elsa. go. It's going to be Anna. Anna. Elsa. Elsa. <laughs> I don't know who sings what. Good call. I got it. In a viral enough. post on Facebook, that has now been deleted. Emily Ooh, Madonia explained that Aurelia's toy had first started to freak them out when it began singing and talking in Spanish. Oh. While switched off. Oh. And they did not sell Spanish speaking dolls. And they certainly didn't sell ones that worked when it was turned off. She and her husband, Matt, decided to throw the doll out with their daughter's blessing. Because let's be honest, nobody's throwing her out. Elsa without the kid freaking out. That's right. But since then, it has found its way back into their home, not once, but twice. Emily wrote, Matt threw it away weeks ago, and then we found it inside the house on a wooden bench. So we were pretty weirded out, and we tightly wrapped it in its own garbage bag and put that garbage bag inside another garbage bag filled with other garbage, and we put that in the bottom of our garbage can. Get the, get the uh, visual on this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Put that underneath a bunch of other bags of garbage and wheeled it to the curb and watched it be collected on garbage day. Mm. Family then went on vacation, thinking the whole thing was behind them. And when they returned home, the doll was back. We were out of town, forgot about it. Today, Aurelia says, Mom, I saw the Elsa doll again. She's in the backyard. Oh. <laughs> no. End of story. <laughs> yeah. That's freaky. <laughs> I see if like, the doll had been like thrown in the garbage can. The, the garbage people pick it up and they see the doll, and like, oh gosh, this kid's gonna freak out. Let's you know put it back for the kid. But it was pretty well wrapped up like a body. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's a mass-produced doll. I'm not gonna put too much into that. I would have thrown it what? in the garbage can. Yeah. I never had a doll show up in my backyard. Yeah, so what if it's mass really? produced? What does that have to do with anything? It came uh, back in the garbage yeah. twice. Uh, it speaks Spanish uh, when it's uh, not uh, uh, I mean, Spanish. people <laughs> like in factories will mess with dolls. Like they're That's like, oh, watch what right? I do to this voice box. It's gonna be hilarious. Uh, this wasn't enough. Uh, uh, Throw the garbage and light it on fire. Yeah. yeah, do that, then I'll believe it. The colonel is wartime right now. He knows. Wow. He knows. Greg. Hey, Greg. everybody. Well, yeah. Greg gets the last story? No. Well, you know, you know, Dave, um, I you know, uh, uh, my fondness with dolls. Got a little yeah. uh, Robert the Doll here. Oh, wow. Look, look it's, it's number 14. It's not mass produced. Look at that. Number oh, yeah. 14. Does I it speak slept. Spanish? Sure. I spent the <laughs> night with Robert the doll. And I don't know oh, I don't want to know about that. Oh, yeah. That's the part of you we really don't need to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah myself, uh, Brad, and Jennifer Blair, and uh, and Lynn spent the night with him. Uh, uh, there, but nope. yeah. There's more to this story. Is there? There's a lot more. Okay. Oh, yeah. but, hey, let me look. Um, as long as we're talking about haunted dolls, how's this? Mm -hmm. 
Hmm? Hmm? And I'll use periods. Listen to <laughs> listen to my uh, Amber on and this. I feel one. like you've been on one all night. What? <laughs> wow. Haunted doll makes guest faint. Period. Yay. Forget <laughs> Chucky, Annabelle, and even Megan. Zach Baggins uh. on a museum is home to a doll. Apparently so possessed. A man passed out cold after a face-to-face -face encounter with it. The mm. Ghost Adventure star tells TMZ that upon looking into the eyes of Lily the doll during a recent visit to the museum, a man fainted and bashed his head against a display stand. Uh, and we've got the chilling moment on camera, he said, of course, because when you go into his museum, you have to sign like, rights and all that stuff over that it in case be, they was drinking all night at a casino uh they're off the strip mm -hmm. right? yep yep mm -hmm. zach says the man received medical attention after regaining consciousness and was okay although disturbingly he wouldn't speak to anyone afterward let alone even look at any of the museum staff the man promptly left and fled the museum and he has not returned since. An Oregon-based antiques dealer first found Lily under an old steamer trunk and took it back to the store where he immediately began having nightmares about a little girl dying a violent death. Mm -hmm. Later, when, the young, uh, when a young girl visited the store, she told her mother that she had a conversation with a little girl named Lily who was inside the doll and said that she had died a, in a scary way. Mm. Zach traveled to the shop to investigate, and when the woman working behind the counter took Lily down from the shelf, she immediately double, doubled over. <laughs> doubled over. <laughs> she immediately doubled over with abdominal pain, chanting, I must wash my hands. I must wash my hands. COVID. Repeatedly. Must. Yeah, just like I, just, I must yeah. wash my hands. <laughs> I must wash my hands. I must wash my hands. That was enough for Zach to put her on display in the infamous Las Vegas Museum, where she clearly continuing her delightful reign of terror. Uh, 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 yeah. uh, See what I did there? Yeah, yeah. it was terrible. So what do we hear now? So let me get this straight. My band of cynics have turned quickly on the subject. They're all like, yeah, it's hot, and they've been drinking out in Vegas. Could be the long line to get into Zach's museum. Like 45 with, minutes. Yeah, heat. And uh -huh. if you've been drinking Alcohol. in the casino. And what? you got to sit there and sign all that paperwork that he's got. Uh, yeah. he's just like, what? Hey, I don't have any doubt that this doll is haunted. I doubt anything that this man says because he's the worst. Well, Who's the worst? Um, Robert the doll is on it. I was there. Oh, where did... This show yeah. sponsored by it having Ghost Adventures. Guest for those couple weeks, Dave. Yeah, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just get. Look, it's a limited new. edition Christmas Robert the Doll. Yeah. Oh, okay. What's yeah. going on? Things are, are falling apart quickly. Uh, oh, oh there's hey, I, I'm that. sorry. Oh. I had to go and do take Let, care. Let's of some put things. those two kids together where they belong in the lower levels. Um, <laughs> so, quick question, Marty. Yes. Do you wake up in the middle of the night ever? And if so, do you ever take note of what time it is? I do, all the time. What time? Party it's, time. It's usually 3.33. I have no idea. What? Seriously? Really? Around 3.33 no. in the morning? Okay. Downtown. I, I want to make sure I still have a couple hours left to sleep before I got to go to work. That's all I care all right. about. Okay. I work at 6.33, 6, 6 so, yeah. 6.66. <laughs> but all right now chachi you seem to be overreacting to something do you wake up uh nightly at weird times yes <laughs> <laughs> he, does. he does he does yeah what I'm time like 3 33 are you serious oh my god that's what time i fall asleep Dude, you got hair on his arm. Floor. I've got hair on my arms. <laughs> you just see that? I just grew hair. It's weird. He's never had hair there ever. Yeah. And he, oh, oh my gosh. And he's got the softest. Be careful. The colonel's going to start coming again if we keep this up. Jeez. <laughs> he, he, he's, he's growing hair on his chest. Every time I do that, I think about Dave when we came to visit you in, in Minnesota and we mm -hmm. had a nice afternoon of um, drinking. 
Yes. Uh, and we were sitting at a at a establishment having a few drinks, and I kept grabbing my side, and I was trying not to say anything. Dave's like, "Are you okay?" And my liver hurts so bad. <laughs> Oh, God. I literally had a drink in front of me, and I couldn't take another sip. My liver hurt so bad. And Dave was so worried that. about me. Yeah. I yeah. can't even imagine that happening. We're like, you know, we're like, hey, Chachi, you should drink some more water. And so he said, yeah, throw some more ice cubes in my drink. That'll help. And he, he's just, God, that liver. And that, what's weird eat. is when he, when he stood up, it looked like a loaf of Italian bread trying to come out of an oven. It was, I've never seen anything like that in my life. It was it's so painful. And he just kept trying to push it back in. I Apparently, it. he didn't pack his myrtle, his man girdle. I don't know if you realize this, but that's not normal. That's no. Not so you got that taken care of, right? You went to the doctor and found yeah. out what that was going on. Yeah. Face bandage. He, he just, uh, he just kept better. it now. What hey, friends are it made some bactine on it? It was fine. What okay. friends are we find out his liver is about to explode, and we're like, hey, more he, drink there. He drank some tussin, and it's fine. <laughs> A little tussin. Don't uh, be boring. Listen. So for this next story, you know, I wanted to do a little back research and this was interesting. Um, there's been some actual research into why people wake up around 3 a.m., which mm -hmm. is known as the witching hour or the devil's hour. And hmm. I, th there was some interesting elements to this. Like they believe at around 3 a.m. when people have paranormal experiences that that's demonic force because Christ was crucified at 9 a.m. He hung on the cross and was officially proclaimed dead at about 3 p.m. So the, the theological idea is that at 3 a.m. being the antithesis, the opposite of that moment, of the Christ moment, is the devil's hour. I say shenanigans because do demons and ghosts live by like daylight savings time? Do they time put about like borders? Yeah, so sitting around yeah. hey, it'd be a good time at three in the morning. We gotta hurry this thing up. We gotta get this thing done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nine no problem. Um so, <laughs> just like that. He's back I helped him out. Way. He's really worried about the time. We should just cut that cord and let keep moving. So I thought that was interesting. And there are all of these different elements of the supernatural that are kind of tied to the 3 a.m. timeline. Mm -hmm. And on the show, I mean, obviously we're here for the paranormal. Tonight, everybody seems a little bit more cynical than normal. <laughs> but I wanted to dig into this because I thought this was an interesting scientific article regarding what they call the Devil's Hour 3 a.m. So let's take a look. Greg Murray, the director of the Center of Mental Health at Swinburne University of Technology in Australia, has weighed in on this phenomenon. Waking and worrying at 3 a.m. is very understandable and very human, he wrote in an article for The Conversation. But in my opinion, it's not a great habit to get into. But what's behind this collective wee hours wakening? If you regularly find yourself staring at the ceiling at around 3 a.m., you're in good company. It's a phenomenon reported by around one in three of us and probably more since the pandemic started. Show of hands, how many people here wake up around 3, 3.30 in the morning every day? If I fall asleep. Yeah. So it's five out of five of us here. Take that, Crest. Yeah. Damn yeah. It. So here we go. <laughs> so angry. So angry. <laughs> That's because according to sleep experts, these early ruminations are related to stress, though not quite directly. Being stressed doesn't make us wake up more in the night, Marie explained, but it does make us more aware of it happening. We actually wake up many times each night, and light sleep is more common in the second half of the night, he wrote. When sleep is going well for us, we're simply unaware of these awakenings. But add a little bit of stress, and there's a good chance that waking will become a fully self-aware state. And stress isn't the only factor that can jolt us awake at 3 a.m. Erratic schedules, doom scrolling, and that's thumbing through your phone, looking at MySpace or <laughs> MySpace. <laughs> I'm just, I speak for Greg when I say that. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, when you're just doom scrolling and looking at all the dumbness that exists out in the world. Um, that's, that's what they mean by doom scrolling. Uh, do, 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 let me see. I didn't know that. Uh, uh, we actually wake up many times. Uh, sleep is going well for us. Like you said, we don't notice these awakenings, but because of the stress, we become more hyper aware of those moments. Um, if you wake up at the same time every day and don't get in bed until you feel sleepy, uh, advised Stephanie Romazuski, a sleep psychologist and director of the Sleepyhead Clinic 
This is yes. what she had to say. You'll notice Sleepyhead Clinic. I don't, that seems fake. Yeah, it really. is. It's accredited by the Seven Dwarves Academy. Oh, okay. Oh, reading I'll it right here. I'll, I'll yeah. shut up. That's fine. Yeah, well, finally. Uh, you'll notice <laughs> if you're waking up at the same time every day, that will start to become your regular time, she explained. Try to keep up with exercise and get bright light exposure in the mornings. Make sure you have social time, too. We need our brains to understand the only opportunity to sleep will be the usual nighttime. Hmm. So we know some reasons why we wake up in the night, but why does it seem to happen so specifically at 3 or 4 a.m.? Well, consider the following. Most of us typically nod off between 11 p.m. and midnight and wake up between 7 and 8 in the morning. What time sits slap bang in the middle of those intervals? Uh, anybody? Midnight. Anybody? No? No? <laughs> Don't go to bed at midnight waking up at, at 8. Oh, anybody? Uh, five. Hmm. Uh, yes, uh, five. Uh, anybody uh, want to answer? Uh, antelope? Two. Three. You guys uh, are the worst. I'm going to just start doing a <laughs> countdown and throw all of you again. <laughs> What's that? Yes, uh, it is because that's that's dead beat in the middle at three to three four o'clock in the morning. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Throughout the night, our sleep cycles between rapid eye movement (REM) sleep and non-REM sleep, each stage of sleep has a different threshold for how easy it is to be woken up. Explained Anisa Das, the assistant director of the sleep medicine program at the Ohio State Wexner Medical Center. Is that is that program better for you? Yeah, uh, it sounds sleepy. more legit yeah, than more like sleepy, sleepy time, whatever. Like, what sleepy is time that? Tea. I think she works at Sleepy Time Clinic there as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one likely explanation for waking up at the same time each night is that you go to sleep at the same time and then at the same time each night, you reach a light stage of sleep and wake up, she noted. Nothing paranormal, nothing to worry about, no sign of the demonic. You might think of the body's sleep cycles as being just a repeating pattern. But, in fact, we spend different lengths of time in each stage as the night goes on. Crucially, as the morning gets even closer, the amount of time we spend in REM sleep increases, meaning we're spending more and more time in a comparatively light and dream-filled slumber. See, I always thought we were in a deeper sleep when we went into REM and slept, mm -hmm. but I guess it's that, yeah. it's that lighter point. I didn't know that. I learned something new today. Isn't that wow. exciting? You tune into the show. Turn into the show and Dave learned something. Yeah, no, I, I can confirm. I can confirm that I, I uh, woke up like three times while you were been reading. <laughs> I, I noticed you nodding off there, Greg. Yeah. That's okay, great. wait, I have a question. Are you done with the story? Can I ask? No, a no, I'm trying to educate. Oh, this is the part of the show yeah. we educate yeah. our uh, go ahead. learning. What is this? Uh, you put them in the same row and they just become the same asshole person. It's amazing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I gotta shake that. I don't know. We miss you a lot, Colonel. I think <sighs> maybe let's blow the screen up and see if we can get back in. Let me try this one more time. We're gonna hit the reset button. Okay, let me see if I can go into the toggle switch here. Uh, sweet tea. Let's pick sweeter than normal. And for Greg, not as grumpy. Let's see if those actually work Let's now as we bring happens. them back in. Here Here's they are. Those. Let's see. There they are. Look what at those smiling that? faces. They're already better than they were. I feel so much better going on. Now, as we continue to educate, enlighten, and entertain our listeners <laughs> and viewers. Yeah. Let's get back into the story. Let's hear it. Um, keeping a notepad. This is an interesting way to help you deal with this. Uh, they say maybe it's possible that some of us in this waking up in the early hours reflects waking up from anxiety dreams. Michael Skull, an associate professor of the psychology and neuroscience at Baylor University in Texas, told Newsweek that that needn't be from nightmares, but uh, like beasts from dungeons and, and cre creepy dimensions coming after you either. Scientists have suspected for about a hundred years now that unfinished tasks rest at a heightened level of activation in the brain until they can be completed, he said. Luckily, this means that there's a fairly simple fix, a keep to-do list, which is something I talk about all the time. Have that list I love that. I, I do a list every morning of everything I can think of that I need to get done that day, and I take joy in scratching them off. And if I add new things, I'm like, I just finished doing dishes and it wasn't on my list. I write, do the dishes, and then scratch it off so that that way I see what my day was filled with. And it leaves me with less anxiety if I've accomplished nothing and I've, I've had something cool happen. So uh, 
Greg is making a list right now. Yeah. Don't do this show ever again. <laughs> you can keep straddling it right on the, on the paper. Keeping a notepad by the bedside, writing out everything on your to-do list, as well as any other worries or stressors circulating in your mind, has been shown to help, Skillen said. He was the author of a 2018 paper, which showed that spending five minutes before bed compiling a list of future tasks made a significant difference in how quickly study participants fell asleep. And he told Newsweek the same principle should apply to nighttime waking as well. This would make sense, according to Colin Espy, a professor of sleep medicine at the Newfield Department of Clinical Neurosciences. Now that I'm hearing all of these other scientific names, the Sleepyhead University Thank does you. sound a little bit more sketchy, but Thank fun. You. I'm going to go on record okay. as saying it's fun and much easier to read. I'm not saying one. it's not fun. Sleepy yeah. Time. Yeah, uh, he advocates what he calls putting the day to rest. Simply put, this means taking some time before sleep to review the past day's events and plan ahead for tomorrow. When people wake up during the night, the thing that comes to mind that may worry them is usually quite predictable, he told Newsweek. That is something that has been happening the previous day or something that's coming up in the next day or the next few days. The practice to do a list could therefore assist the brain to pr let me try that again and read it yeah. in a in a much more uh readable way the practice mm -hmm. of a to-do list mm -hmm. see there's where those mm -hmm. important commas and question mm -hmm. marks and you guys are trying to force me to rush and i don't like rush no no take your time no, no i'm more no, for please. ukraine um, yeah, take yeah, your time sir. please yeah Not practice enough. of a to-do list therefore you can assist the brain um and, and help yourself before waking up. If that doesn't work, though, it may be time to see a specialist, especially if the problem has been bothering you for more than a couple of months, advised Roma Zuski. If it's been there over three months, then absolutely see a doctor. Yeah. Baloney. Baloney. Let me Just, ask you a question. Dave. Wait, hold on, Marty. Let me wrap this up real quickly. Okay. You don't need to see a doctor. We all go to bed stressing about things. The world's in a crazy-ass place. Thank Start you. writing things down. Plan your next couple of days. Look at the things mm. you're accomplishing. Start to do that. You're mm. going to start to feel better. Do mm. some box breathing. That'll help you out as well. And start eliminating idiots from your show that just want to keep interfering and telling you how what you're saying right. is wrong and I we should really speed this up. Those the are probably the biggest The percent elimination, right? Yeah. You're going to eliminate 40% of your problems. Yeah. And yeah, there should be a study somewhere. Maybe you should do that study, Dave. Uh, you have a lot more free time than we do, Colonel. You're... Uh, <laughs> You work for the government, so maybe <laughs> that's something you can work on. Uh, you had a question, Colonel. Let's see if we can get to that before we allow uh, people to interfere again. That's okay. Don't you feel like you're kind of gaming the system when you write things that, on your list to do that you've already done? No. It's like, oh, I got up in the middle of the night and went to the bathroom. Oh, that's done. Well, that's, that's not really a task that you, you, you've got to look at. The reason but I tell could, people about that. In the system. The, Go for it. Just game it. Just game it out. Just okay. To actually answer the question you've asked, uh, Colonel, let me <laughs> let me just take you off the screen so I can uh, respond. No, when you make a list and add to it the things that you've also accomplished that you'd forgotten to add to that list, at the end of your day, you can go back and reflect. Because how many of us are in that mind rut where we're like, another day gone? I did nothing. Nothing. I did nothing. Now you can go back to that list and see that there were items that you had tracked that you did. And there were at least another 10 to 20 items that you didn't even think of that you completed. So that gives you a success ratio. It starts to help you and embed in you a feeling that you are accomplishing things. Yeah. Okay. Actually, <laughs> I was noticing okay. when you, uh -huh. when, when, when Chachi and Dave were the only two on the screen, it looks like you guys are in the same room almost. Does it? Not too bad. It's the yeah. way that, where it's yeah, cut right there, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like the bookshelf ends right next to me. And you know what? This kind of feels better, really, doesn't it? This whole viewpoint. It feels warmer. It does feel warmer. There is the Colonel, ladies and gentlemen, Greg Lawson is also here as we get ready to say goodbye. Sweet tea is checked out. <laughs> uh, turned her camera off and has begun. Oh, I, I'm, oh, what's going on? Oh, are you there? I'm sorry. Hey. Uh, welcome back to the program. My feelings aren't hurt. It's fine. It's it fine. shouldn't be because it's we fine. don't allow people with feelings on the show. Exactly. I think that's been oh, pretty, that's uh, right. pretty aware. Hey, Mark G., thanks for joining us at the beginning of the program and uh, sharing your stories with us. We appreciate that. Thank you to my uh, illustrious crew of newscasters here. And we will be back again next week to talk more. And Monday night, we've got 
spooky stories of black eyed kids and new technology to help us communicate with the other <gasps> side. That's right here on the very best in paranormal programming. I'm Dave Schrader, and this is our Paranormal 60 News. It's Wednesday night and I'm alone. The paranormal 60s on. It's just for paranormal freaks like me. With poltergeists and ghosts and blues and UAPs. You miss a word, you do a shot. It starts to snowball and we laugh a lot. It's just like drinking with your TV friends. I'll be best out before tonight's show ends. Dreaming the aliens are taking me away. I'm gonna wake up till something late on Saturday. It's Wednesday night and I'm alone. The paranormal 60s on. Traders on. Traders on. Traders on. Shachi and the Colonel and the paranormal. Detective always traders got me and they all will be corrected. He's got protective bracelets and some crazy magic tricks. Even Scully cannot save him from the voice of Stevie Nicks. Traders on. Traders on. Wednesday night, don't be alone. The paranormal 60s on. Now one day Dave might even put me on a show. There's a ghost in my mom's basement, man, I live down there, I know. It's Wednesday night, don't be alone. The paranormal 60s on. Traders on. Words is hard. 